So around the 19th or the 20th, I just took some clothes in a black garbage bag and I uh, just walked into Stanford planning to stay at the shelter. I thought if I could get away from the vehicle that I was driving with the electromagnetic energy oscillator in the vehicle and the uh, energy weapons that were at the Arboretum that maybe I could uh, you know annihilate all the Drax and demons I had and then uh, get back to normal you know there was also a weird individual at the Arboretum it was just a weird weird place. He was employed as a hunter. He had a razor hunting arrows and he was supposed to kill the deer that were in there. And he and I didn't get along too well. But he was there projecting witchcraft spells and I said this, I'm, I'm leaving. So it was nighttime when I left the Arboretum. And I walked until that morning. And I asked somebody where the shelter was. And they told me where it was. I noticed that the guy who told me seemed to be a little scripted. So to this day, I don't know if that was the actual shelter or what that place was. But who was in there was a bunch of military guys. Surprise, surprise. And they all joked around with me when I was in there. They're like, hey, John, you ever been in the military before? I'm like, no. They're like, you sure? You sure you've never been in the military, John? I'm like, positive. So all that was uh, psych warfare operations. And it was run by the Vatican with the CIA directly underneath it and all these military guys underneath them and what they do is uh, they basically introduce people to synthetic telepathy and we were all there in the mess hall and what they would do is um, begin to say what you're thinking out loud to screw with you as if they're reading their minds and broadcasting or just saying they're putting you on your they're putting you on blast so whatever you're thinking they're gonna yell out there's a bunch of new guys there who look completely bewildered and completely freaked out they don't know what's happening there was a couple kids there that were just completely sedated. I felt bad for them. And then there was some older dudes that uh, looked like just old evil guys. And they were the ones that were kind of directing the whole thing and yelling out the information. And they happened to be a lot of old African American guys. Then there was a guy that looked just like an older version of uh, Ron O'Neill and he had become autistic but he was uh, using telepathy but he dealt with the situation by basically just regressing into kind of silence 
but the guys that were considered handlers or the old African American guys, they uh, they kind of got off on uh, basically screwing with the other people. And I'm used to telepathy. So they soon quickly realized that, you know, I'll screw with them right back. And oftentimes I'll start preaching. But what they'll do to some of the guys to screw with them is, uh, like I said, a lot of the stuff is, uh, they try to bitch a lot of people. And that's the process of uh, getting them to be subservient. And there was this one strong Spanish kid there that uh, they were screwing with and they would yell like bitch at him or something. And if he looked over, they would start laughing. Oh, you looked a bitch, you looked a bitch and stuff. And that's an old trick they use because if someone goes, hey, you know, you, you look over. But I know all these games from the street. And, you know, if someone yells something, I don't give them any attention. And if they mutter something as, as I walk by, I mutter something disrespectful right back to them. So, I kind of hang through that operation. The uh, synthetic telepathy thing, where most people just, just got completely bewildered to what was happening, because they're completely tranced out. And uh, I just uh, ended up just sitting at the table with the so-called handlers and just making fun of them and stuff and making it clear I didn't want to hang with any of them and I wanted to tend to my own business. So that night we went up to the bunks and went to sleep. Um, the next day got up. We were given a pack of Oreos to eat in the morning. And I went out in the street and just walked around. And uh, there was more conflict on the street. When I insulted people and they insulted me and stuff. And they were basically just trying to, I guess, test me to see what I'm about. And so, let's see. No, I'm sorry, that, that morning before I left, I got up real early. And uh, there was a powerful psychic they, they brought in that morning and he was a black kid. And uh, he was trying to engage me with uh, basically it's psychological or synthetic uh, telepathy involving, you know, psychological warfare operations. And uh, we're projecting energy back and forth. And he wasn't the worst guy, but he was a strong psychic. And at one point, you know, I got sick of it and I got up to walk away and he like controlled this old white bum that, wa that walked up to me and said, uh, he got hit with these big mothball eyes, dude, these big spinning blue eyes. He goes, you have beautiful eyes, my mother used to say. I said, get the fuck out of my face, man. But uh, it's weird how the handlers can control people using telepathy. And he was moving people around like they were chess pieces. And... Uh, I didn't want to hurt the kid. I, I, I sent one thing out of him, he looked like he was gonna cry, and so I'm like, I'm, I'm leaving, you know? And so I left, and I said, there's, like I said, there's more stuff on the street for me to deal with. I exercised some people on the street. I ended up sitting in front of uh, where everyone was hanging out. I sat in front of this store on a milk crate. And, uh, 
a lot of demons through there, a lot of uh, witches. So it was just like nonstop, like annihilating these demons and drax. So I'm sure I look crazy to some of them. I walked around a lot. And then that night when I went back to the shelter, I got in trouble for having a marijuana pipe. I tried to bring it to the shelter and they patted me down. And so that night, um, I guess there's a change of staff and all of a sudden this mean old freaking bulldog of a black guy, but he's old. Um, he was like, yelling at me to get off the bunk like he was having flashbacks from the Marines and I better get downstairs and shit. So I started yelling back at him. And uh, I'm glad that I didn't end up fighting him because the last time he's got arrested for beating up an old man at the homeless shelter, that would look great, right? But uh, all of a sudden, He's like dragged out and like screaming at me. And I kind of wake up, I kind of yell back at him. And I'm pulling on my boots, you know, and I'm glaring at him. And his eyes just started going crazy. Like uh, he was some sort of like mechanical head or something, like some sort of Android head. His eyes started blinking at different, different like speeds. And it just like, both eyes were twitching. It looked like it was like robotic. And uh, that's what happens when these like hardcore plants get the demons pulled out of them. And so he was yelling that the uh, front desk wanted me downstairs. So I walked down there and there was a big fat black lady down there. It says, you can't stay here. You can't get busted for carrying in a marijuana pipe and still stay here. I said, fine, I'm leaving. But I'll tell you, tell you, I'm gonna tell you one thing, this old man's crazy. And I looked over the old man, he's completely changed. He sat there completely like harmless old old man just sitting there and he's looking down. Completely changed. He had been a raving lunatic a minute before and now just sat there meek as a lamb, sitting right by his little handler there, this big fat lady. I said, this old man's crazy. She was like, you have to leave. I said, fine, I'm leaving. So the funny part was, uh, I didn't tell you the night, the night before we had was called Chilitos for dinner. Chilitos is like one of the best things they serve in jail. And it's like uh, chili and rice with some beans in there. So they, they had Chilitos at the uh, shelter and that was a big treat for all of us. And um, so we, we had our Chilitos and then they had a little slice of pie for us. And then they brought in this nun with like a guitar. And she had a terrible voice, but she sang the song, it's all for you, it's all for you, right? And it just kept on, <laughs> kept on repeating. And so eventually I just got up and tried to walk out of the room. But in the front desk like, you can't leave the mess hall. You can't go up to the bunk, no. I go outside. And all the handlers were sitting there like, they're used to it, right? I'm trying to trigger, I guess, some new people. It's all for you, it's all, yeah, this is all for you, buddy. It's all for you. Hey, CIA, military, it's all for you, buddies. Just remember that. It's all for you. The Vatican says it's all for you.